Hey, welcome to Flutter Canvas Tutorials. So this is a new series where I create a simple interaction or an effect with Flutter Canvas. If you'd like to see something specific done, please leave a comment and then I will try to make those ones requested. In this video, I'm creating an image carousal that you can interact with. You tap on the screen to show the next image and it cycles through the images. So for this, I will create a new Flutter project called Image Carousal. What is it, Flutter? What don't you like about my project name? <laughs> okay, it needs uh, underscores. All right, now we have a new Flutter project. Let's have a look inside the pub spec YAML. So since we are loading some images for simplicity, I will load them as assets. And in here, in the pub spec YAML, specify the images that you will load. Okay, for this example, I will load three images from Assets Images folder. And before that, I should copy some images onto it. The images look fine. Let's take a look at the code and delete most of the I generated. <laughs> Quick sanity check is to run the app to see if there are any errors. So we're going to use a stateful widget called My Painter as the home screen. My painter can be easily generated in VS Code by typing some letters and pressing tab. That is quite handy. Now we create a scaffold widget that has a custom painter widget. If you are new to Flutter, Flutter is all about composable widgets, which means you can put widgets inside widgets inside widgets. So here the child widget is set to an empty container. That is important. I will explain why in a bit. We set the painter property with another widget. This time it is a custom painter class called my canvas. And I will create this class in a new file called my canvas. This is a subclass of a custom painter. So we derive it as shown. We can use VS Code autocomplete to generate these uh, overrides. Should repaint function is a helper function that Flutter rendering system uses to find out if it should re-render. Usually you should say yes if the contents have changed. But since our canvas doesn't update any variables, we return true from it saying we should always repaint. The paint function is where the action happens. First, just to have some bearings, let's just draw a frame, which is a rectangle. So here in the paint function, as you can see, there is a parameter called size. This gives the size of the canvas. The reason why we added a container as a child earlier was to trick the rendering system to send the correct size here. Mystery solved. The offset we compute here is the center of the screen and we create a rectangle centered on the offset with a given width and height and in this case they are both W. Okay, so we have a frame, good progress. Let's now load the images. This I will do in the My Painter class, specifically in the initState function. initState is a special function where you can initialize the settings. It can be generated using VS Code as before.
So what we're going to do is that we're going to loop over a list of names and load them from the assets and decode them as images. Uh, we use root bundle function from Dart services to load the assets as a binary stream. These are async functions, but we will use dot then to chain up the callbacks without using async await here because init state doesn't like async functions. Decode image from list is a function that takes in a byte array and return an image. Very handy. Asynchronously, of course. Now, once it decodes the bytes to image, we can add that to our list. But since we want to repaint our widgets when these things change, we have to wrap that inside a set state function. There are a couple of image classes in Flutter. We want to get the one from Dart UI namespace. So there are three variables we have to maintain. One is the list of images that we keep loaded. The other is a reference to the selected image. The last one is to have an integer index. Now, we need to do a little check so that things don't crash. So we will pass in the selected image to the canvas so it can draw it. In the canvas, we need to create a member variable and add a parameter to the constructor. Now we are ready to draw the image onto the canvas. We simply use the canvas draw image here. It is a good idea to check if the BG image is null because that would crash otherwise. Looks good apart from a little offset problem we can swiftly fix. Now that we have the images loaded, we want to see if we can change them when the user taps on them. For this, we can use gesture detector. So here I will wrap the custom paint widget in the gesture detector. This means that when we tap on the custom paint widget, we can get an event. So the event we are interested here is on tap. There are other events you can uh, subscribe to. We can attach a callback function just like this. But before we go further, let's just print something to see if we can actually trap that event. Looks all good. We can see the tap events. So it's a matter of changing the selected image when we get this event. This is quite simple. What we do is to increment the index value each time and also set the selected image. We take the modulo image count so the result will always be in the range of zero to image count minus one. To keep things clean, 
we will do a check to see if there are any images in the list first. All these have to be wrapped inside set state function because it signals the rendering framework to redraw our widget. Great, we can cycle through the images. Looks like one image is missing. I think I made a boo-boo somewhere. Let's see, ah, right here. So let's see if we can actually resize and fit these images into uh, the frame. This can be done using a function called apply box fit. And from the Flutter docs, there is a function tailor made for us. Swiftly copying that over because what could possibly go wrong. Paint image requires few parameters. First, the image to be drawn, then the destination rectangle on the canvas where we want it drawn, and then a paint object, which is trivial. And the last one is how we want the image to be resized. The box fit enum has a few different options. Have a look and select the most appropriate for your liking, but I'm going to stick with contain. Let's inspect what's going inside the paint image function. First, it computes the size of the image and then uses apply box fit to get the source and destination rectangles. Inscribe function returns the source and destination rectangles according to the alignment we specify. And the source and destination rectangles return from the previous step, um, which is apply box fit function. And finally, draw image rect draws a rectangle on the canvas containing an image portion given by the source rectangle. Okay, nice. We can tap through the images in a cycle. Our carousel works. Um, as an exercise, I will leave to you how to draw those little dots below the image to indicate which image is being shown. This is quite simple to do. Have a try before you look at the code. Since a lot of people asked for the code, I will release the code for these videos, but please be aware they are licensed for individual educational purposes only. If you want to use it for any kind of commercial activity, please contact me first. Um, if you find this video helpful, please leave a comment and a like and subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this. Until next time.